Today, we're going to be taking on the three most difficult things in model painting that ever existed ever. Painting yellow, painting skin tones, and eyes that are slightly concealed. Oh, and this video is sponsored by CA3D Studios, so please check them out in the description. They make some freaking fantastic models, and uh, you should check them out just because of that. Jubilee is uh, the one of the X-Men uh, ladies that I like, and I have already used this Chaos Black to prime my models, and uh, they're already hanging in the most precarious way possible, because that is just like how I like to do things. Now, I would be lying if I said there wasn't any preparation work done on this model. I have already done all that. I sanded everything that needs to be sanded. I have also added some magnets. Now, I realize this is probably uh, a little bit far in the process already. And if you haven't uh, seen how to prepare or get to this point, then you might want to watch a couple videos back. But we're going to be painting. And today, uh, that's what this video is all about, is how to paint yellow skin tones and uh, eyes that are a little bit uh, hidden. I just thought I should mention this because it's uh, not very obvious, but you see the masking tape? I have uh, printed this in clear resin and I have masked it off. That is because she has some glasses on and uh, also a bubble and I wanted to try and maybe emulate this look. If I can't get it right, uh, then oh well. So now that the base is ready, it's waiting for me to put lights on the inside. I'm going to put cob LEDs all on the inside. When that is done, uh, then that base will be done. I don't need to do anything else there. It is now time for us to paint the model, so let's move over to my airbrush booth and do that. This is how I painted the yellow for this jacket. And I'm going to be totally honest with you here, perhaps starting off from black is a bad idea. But if you use a little bit of brain cells, you can find that a black, if that is the only primer paint you have, is not the worst idea because as long as you get rid of all the black, your yellow will still look like yellow. And the biggest trick for painting yellow that I could ever give to anybody is to start off from a baby pink base. Um, it, as you noticed, I had put down some transparent red at first. And this is because I wanted to have a good contrast between the shadows and the highlights. Using Imperial Fist Yellow, I can spray over the top of this base that I had put down and have something that resembles a yellow in color. Uh, but in the shadows, there is a nice goldeny orangey color. In in order to really boost that yellow though, I'm going to use a standard bright yellow acrylic paint. This one is from Army Painter, it doesn't really matter where, but I sprayed that into all the highlighted spots. I then took Eandon yellow just to reinforce that golden orange in the shadows to create a really good contrast. I then used a satin varnish over the top of this and uh, job's done. That okay, so we have got one of the difficult parts done and that is the yellow. And uh, this is not the only way to do yellow, but this is a way to do yellow. This has that orange look to it, and it's exactly how you paint yellow if you want to paint yellow in this kind of form. Next up, it's time to do the skins, and uh, we can then add this jacquet onto the nice skins that we paint. Yay! Recently, I have been experimenting a little bit with skin tones, mainly because I have mostly pushed using something like the Fairy Flesh set from Nocturna, which is a great set, don't get me wrong, but it starts to become a problem when you run out of one of the colors in the set and you have to replace that one color with an entire new set. And uh, so I've decided I'm going to start figuring out a new way of doing skin tones that works for everybody, but at the same time, you can buy every color separately. And I have been working on this this is the formula and if you're wondering why I'm not speaking specifically about what exactly I'm using and why in this video that is because I'm working on an exclusive video for my patrons where I'm going to explain why I've chosen these colors and how to use them to create multiple different types of skin tones with this exact same uh, let's call it the ground affected set, but it's not a set. It is just separate uh, bottles that make up one sort of uh, kind of set. Uh, never mind any of that, but what you can see I'm doing is building up volumes with only two, uh, let's call them in inverted commas, skin tone colors. And that is the only two colors that I need for this set uh, because 
I can add white and get some brightness out of it, but at the same time, uh, the magic color is what draws everything together, and that is this orcish flesh, uh, which I have used in many videos. This is one thing that has become a constant throughout things, and realistically, uh, this color is the color that takes the desaturated flesh uh, that everything makes uh, flesh look like, and makes it look saturated again, for some reason. Uh, I don't know why, but it's a magic color. Now as I build highlights over the final uh, brighter spots on the skin, I'm uh, pretty much thinking to myself that I'm nearly done with uh, another difficult part of model painting, and that is skin painting. And now is time for me to start doing all the necessary uh, blocking out of all the colors uh, that the rest of the model has. And uh, there is uh, some very easy colors on this model, which is Jubilee, that was uh, offered by CA 3D Studios. There will be a link in the description. Uh, by the way, I already mentioned this video is sponsored by them, and they're a Patreon where you can get models just like this, to paint for yourself. Uh, if you like these kind of things, or things similar to this, you can 3D print these on your FDM machine or your resin printer, it makes no difference, uh, but check them out in the description uh, for your own model uh, printing needs. Uh, but now that we have painted all of the base coats onto everything, we've used Pinkle as the t-shirt colour, and we've used a nice uh, sort of medium blue for the pants. I am now going to tape up everything so that I can use my airbrush and as you may notice I taped up the just the skin parts and I used some cling film to cover up one section which is the pants in this case and I used some bright baby pink to give some nice volume to that t-shirt. Once I was done with the volume I was not happy with the saturation levels of it so I added a fluorescent pink over the top just to make it really bright and powerful, a comic-y pink. When I was done with that, I wrapped up the top part so that that wouldn't get the blue paint on it and I gave a general sort of highlight to the pants and the shoes because uh, the shoes and the pants are made of what I think is a similar material, jean type material. I try to add some texture on the shoes and I realized this was a bad idea. So I moved away very quickly and I used an airbrush to put a little bit of shadow onto that jean type material. But when I was done with that, I took progressively more bits of deck tan and added it into the lightest blue and just dry brushed over the top of both the shoes and the pants. Because there is already sculpted in detail of the jean effect, it, it's it, this is so easy, a friggin' monkey could do this. All you have to do is just slowly but surely make the blue that you're dry brushing over the top whiter and whiter and right near the end you want to take a little bit more deck tan just on its own and kind of just dab it on some parts where the jean pant would be a little bit more distressed and that's it. Bob is now in fact your uncle you have painted jean pant uh, but to really sell this effect uh, that dry brushing is going to look a little bit gaudy so you can take I used Drakenhof Nightshade, that's what I used, and I sprayed that into the shadows of the rest of the jean pant, uh, thus selling the effect of jean pant on a model. I then also used that same Drakenhof Nightshade and added some details into the crevasses, and uh, straight after that I painted her belt with black because she's wearing a black belt, uh, but black belts are very boring, so we'll come back to this later with an airbrush in order to create a little bit of highlight on that black belt. Uh, this, because it's so simple and easy, I don't need to mask up any of this, it just lower my pressure on the airbrush, use a very thin down paint, and uh, very carefully try not to paint that on the freshly painted jean pant. Uh, once I was done with that, I painted the little emblem on the inside of her belt buckle, which needed to be red, so obviously I need to put white down first, just so that the red can actually be red over the top of that colour. Once I was done with that, I painted a brass or goldish sort of colour on the outside of the buckle, and I painted the X black, and then moved on to the little emblem on her t-shirt. Uh, this is not a t-shirt, uh, but I don't think I can say the word of what it is, I don't even know what it is. Uh, it, I, I then used some silver to paint the little rivets around her belt, uh, 
before very swiftly gluing her into the jacket so that everything is one and I don't have to drop anything uh, or that is hanging precariously off one of my light poles. But once I was done with that, I added a couple of tiny little details, just a couple of highlights here and there. I put a gloss on the inside of the belt uh, buckle thing because I felt like a different texture would make more sense. But when I was done with that, I put that carefully aside on a pillow on the couch so that I could work on the rest of the model that was going to hold this part up. Normally, I would work from the shoes upwards because that makes more sense because you can stand it in the stand and you can slowly start building the thing so that you don't drop anything. It's the best way, really. Uh, but in this case, uh, it went the wrong way around. I don't know what I was doing, uh, but I did it. Also, there is no texture on the bottom of the shoe, but her foot is sticking up slightly, and because it's at the back of the model, you're probably never going to see this, uh, but it's a little detail that I was uh, pretty happy to add myself, and I basically just freehanded some tread onto the bottom of her shoes. Uh, then, I try to paint those tiny little laces, which I'm not going to lie. And all the times I've painted shoes, that is the one thing that I absolutely hate doing, is the laces, because if you get this wrong, they look dumb. And now that the shoes are done, technically that means that both the legs are done, this gives me the stand that I actually need to stand the rest of the model on this base. Because then now, I can't drop it off my couch and it can't fall off one of my light poles. This is also a time that I can now start working on some of the small little details. You may already notice that I have shaded the gloves. I did that much in the same way that I did with the belt as well. I did also that on her little arm warmer that she's wearing on the other side too. Then I used some brass again. This is a Monument Hobbies colour and actually it's bronze, it's not even brass, so forget the first word that I said, uh, but I painted the jewellery with that colour. I also used some rich gold to highlight that as well, uh, you don't see that on camera unfortunately. Uh, this would be way too long of a video if I showed you absolutely everything, uh, but just imagine that's what I did. So it's a, a new day, apparently, on uh, this planet, and uh, I had some major issues yesterday, and it uh, drove me a little bit nuts, so I closed my shop and I went home. But it might be helpful to explain the issues that I'm having. Uh, this clear coat that is supposed to go over the top of this has gone on four times, and I've had to sand it off every time because it doesn't look nice and clear uh, like the gum. It looks... Uh, I don't know what it's doing. So today's mission is to try and get that clear coat to work, which means I'm going to have to mask up somewhat and spray it and then repaint again. So that is what I'm going to do because I've decided I'm no longer fighting with it and you should no longer fight with me too, Mr. Model. Let's uh, get this fixed right now. It is also at this point that I'm severely regretting gluing the gum into her mouth, but uh, don't tell anyone I have regrets, and let's get this fixed. Now that I have got gloss on the glasses, it doesn't look as bad as I originally thought it was going to. And it's now time to go back over all the parts that didn't actually fully get masked up and uh, paint them back to the colors that they needed to be and then start working on the eyes. Before I did that though, I, off camera, I gave her makeup. I'm sorry, I couldn't record it. I was terrified. I didn't even know if it was gonna work, but I just used a really lightened down Drakenhof nightshade with a bit of water and I sprayed that very carefully on a low air pressure to the edges of the corners of her eyes to make it look like makeup. That's all I did. I used the typical black line over the eyeliner and uh, I used pink on the inside because that's the new thing I guess that I'm doing and uh, painted in some irises uh, all over in the insides of the eyes making sure they weren't too wonk. I'm not gonna lie, I did this twice. Uh, but once I was done that, it was time to call the model done. Home to the mountain. Well, 
Well, hopefully you picked up some inspiration in this video for your next printing and painting escapades. And uh, if not, maybe it was just a great time while you're having a crap on the toilet. Uh, but it is now important for me to say a very special thank you to my patrons. If you want to support me and this channel to grow and keep making videos every single week, then I need you to go check out the link in the description for my own personal Patreon if you want to keep the lights on and blinding my eyeballs. And now, if you didn't like anything that you saw in this video, I really don't actually care, and you can f*** off. Home to the mountain